Welcome back to Football Daily, where we're taking a look at 10 mistakes that have defined your club's campaign. It's a controversial one, so let's get into it. 10. West Ham not signing a striker One of the more surprising sides in the Premier League this season has been West Ham, who have traded in mid-table mediocrity for a crack at European football. Riding the wave from last campaign, David Moyes' side even looked like they had the quality to finish in the Champions League spots this year finding themselves in third spot after defeating Liverpool 3-2 in November. However, a main concern entering the season was the Hammers' lack of depth up front, with only Mikhail Antonio as a striker, a position even he didn't start consistently until late 2019. But now he is without a league goal since New Year's Day, West Ham have slipped from 4th to 7th, whilst Moyes declined to buy another striking option in the January window. Jared Bowen has found form with 5 goals in 5 games, but since then he was sidelined with injury, and goals drying up in East London is hardly a coincidence. No player has reached double figures in the league to date, as hope of a debut Champions League qualification slowly fades and dies. If Moyes had a more consistent goalscorer, West Ham could be in a far stronger position right now. 9. Simeone changing Atleti's system After bringing in Rodrigo de Paul, Mateus Cunha and Antoine Griezmann, Atletico seem set to retain their La Liga crown. However, fast forward 7 months and Diego Simeone's side sit 12 points off Real Madrid. In hindsight, adding 3 attackers to a front line already featuring João Felix, Luis Suarez and Angel Correa was bound to cause a headache. After romping to the title in 2021, playing largely in a 3-5-2, Simeone was forced to chop and change his team to try and accommodate new signings. Atletico have used 8 formations in the league according to who scored, but 27 million euro man Cunha has still been limited to 640 league minutes. Despite averaging just under under a goal and assist per 90, the best ratio in the squad, he's played less football than Kieran Trippier, who left in early January. Simeone has struggled to provide consistency to any of his attackers, with Correa and Suarez the only two players to register more than 10 league goals. If El Cholo spent more time fine-tuning his tactics, Los Colchoneros could have pushed Real for the title once more. 8. Spurs' manager hunt Daniel Levy and Fabio Paratici should count themselves extremely lucky that Spurs are still in the hunt for the top four and have a world-class manager in Antonio Conte. Their well-publicized search for a new coach after Jose Mourinho was sacked in April 2021 went on for 72 days, reportedly approaching Potter, Fonseca, Ten Hag, Conte and Pochettino before finally settling on Nuno Espirito Santo. The calamity was enough to push Harry Kane away from the club, as The Athletic reported both him and Tanga Ndombele had asked to leave in August. Despite the Lily White starting the campaign with a win against Manchester City, it was clear to all that the former Wolves boss was out of his depth. Spurs played turgid football and were third bottom in the league for goals scored by the time Nuno left. The fact everyone knew he was so far down the managerial shortlist definitely didn't help in those four months. After being knocked out of the Conference League, the Carabao Cup and the FA Cup, we'll sadly never know what the season could have been had Tottenham nailed down Conte or Ten Hag early on, instead of wasting the first quarter of their campaign. 7. Juventus rehiring Allegri who knows where Juve could be if they hadn't persuaded Max Allegri to ditch Real Madrid at the 11th hour. The former Milan coach had already signed an agreement with Madrid in the summer of 2021, but after sacking Andrea Pirlo, a panicked Andrea Agnelli brought back the man who'd won him five league titles. The old lady may sit five points clear of fifth place Roma at the time of recording, but Allegri clearly wasn't ready to come back. In fact, Giorgio Chiellini said his manager returned expecting to find a team more similar to the one he'd left in 2019, and the readjustment period cost them vital points. His defence conceded 11 goals in their first 10 league games, and by December, the Bianconeri were 12 points adrift from first placed Inter. The 54-year-old may have only lost once in Serie A since late November, but even with Dusan Vlavic, they were embarrassingly swept aside by Villarreal in the Champions League round of 16. Had the club hired someone like Simone Inzaghi instead of someone who'd spent two years trying to work anywhere other than Turin, perhaps the gap between them and those in the title race would be much smaller than it currently is. 6. Brighton shifting attackers Last summer, it seemed Brighton were one good striker away from being a top Premier League side. So, we're baffled as to why they're persevering with less options than the five strikers they had last season, and why they've loaned out their new attacking signings. Aaron Connolly, Florent Andone and Jose Izquierda were understandably either sold or loaned out, after none of them majorly impressed. 
Brighton then beat West Ham and Arsenal to sign Slavia Prague prospect Abdelassima for £6 million after he shone in the Europa League. Despite the excitement, he was sent on loan to Stoke for the whole season. Then in January, Denis Undav transferred from Belgian table toppers Union saint gelois after scoring 19 goals in 22 games. But again, he was loaned out immediately. Kasper Kozlowski, a midfielder who contributed 5 goals in 12 starts in Poland, was signed in January and sent out on loan too. The result is the Seagulls have scored the third fewest goals in the Premier League, three less than Watford, but Potter has said the likes of Undav need time to adapt. After failing to convert chances for a second season running, surely next season is the time for Lonies to get their chance. 5. Wolfsburg hiring Van Bommel Considering Wolfsburg finished fourth last season in tidy fashion, it's mind-boggling that they sunk to just five points away from the relegation zone. After a summer managerial merry-go-round in Germany that saw boss Oliver Glasner join Frankfurt, sporting director Marcel Schaefer settled on Mark van Bommel as coach for the 21-22 season. The Dutchman's only head coaching experience had come at PSV, where he lasted 18 months. Things started well when they won their first four Bundesliga games, but then De Wolf had gained just one point from their next 15 available. Van Bommel was promptly sacked in October, but every top coach in the league had just started at a new club. It left the North German side turning to Florian Kohlfeldt, who in the pre previous season had relegated Werder Bremen for the first time since 1980. Unsurprisingly, that hasn't worked out, with Kohlfeldt winning just 29% of his games in charge. As Glasner's Frankfurt climbed towards the top six, Wolfsburg would see Wout Weghorst jump ship to join Burnley, leaving just Lucas Umetje as the only player in the squad with more than three league goals. With a real possibility of relegation, those at the Volkswagen Arena have realised that not every gamble in football pays off. 4. Villa over replacing Grealish As the summer transfer windows shut, Aston Villa were applauded for smartly reinvesting the money they made from the Jack Grealish sale, bringing in Leon Bailey, Emmy Buendia, Danny Ings and later Felipe Coutinho to fill a 16-goal contribution void. But it quickly became clear that rather than their new toys propelling the villains up the table, they just gave Dean Smith a new headache. Bailey and Buendia both wanted to play off the right, while Ings desired to play up front with or instead of Ollie Watkins. Dean Smith switched between a 5-3-2 to a 4-3-3, desperately attempting to get a tune out of the squad. The biggest victim has been Bailey, as the Jamaican has played fewer minutes than Luca Dean, who only arrived in January. He has been injured at times, but Coutinho's arrival effectively sentenced the 24-year-old to life on the bench. Smith's successor, Steven Gerrard, has struggled with the same crop, and Villa sit below Brentford and leads for XG per 90. Meanwhile, they're currently conceding over 1.3 goals a game, up from 1.2 last season. Instead of Ings or a Bailey, getting someone to replace Tyra Mings, who has made 14 defensive errors since 2019, may have been the better option. 3. Man United not sacking Ole Gunnar Solskjaer the reality is that Manchester United sacked Ole Gunnar Solskjaer a lot later than they should. The Norwegian was shown the door following an embarrassing 4-1 defeat to Watford in November, the side's fifth defeat in seven matches, seeing them tumble to eighth despite going unbeaten in the first five matches of the season. In hindsight, it's obvious when the former Cardiff City boss should have gone. A month before the Watford debacle, Jurgen Klopp's Liverpool had turned up at Old Trafford and frankly stunned the footballing world as they beat their hosts 5-0 and were already four goals to the good at half-time, leaving Solskjaer and his side to slink away to the dressing room amidst the wrath of the United faithful. Had he been sacked then, Antonio Conte was still on the market, although ironically, Man United's 3-0 victory over Spurs a week later saw the London club ditch Nuno Espirito Santo and probably hire the Italian. The Red Devils would later hire Ralph Rangnick as an interim boss, and with just a month left of the campaign, we still have no idea of their next permanent manager. It could have been oh so different. 2. Donnarumma vs Real Madrid it may have been just a single moment in a match, but Gianluigi Donnarumma's errors in PSG's Champions League tie against Real Madrid is emblematic of the French side season. The keeper was barged off the ball by Karim Benzema, whose subsequent goal was the first in a hat-trick that would see Los Blancos win 3-2 on aggregate, despite being 2-0 behind with half an hour to go. Donnarumma, Sergio Ramos and Lionel Messi were expected to be the missing pieces as Le Parisien looked for a maiden Champions League title, having come close the last two seasons. But that's not how it went down, leaving Maurizio Pochettino walking the managerial tightrope before his first full campaign is even over. The stack squad, who only added to their star power last summer, have entered April with just league football in their calendar, and remarkably no trophies to their name so far either, having been knocked out in every domestic cup competition. Messi is also said to be unhappy in Paris, whilst Mbappe remains on the verge of leaving for their European conquerors. If the Qatari sports kingdom crumbles, it'll be hard not to look upon Donnarumma's mistake as the catalyst. 
1. Everton hiring Benitez As the 2020-21 campaign came to a close, Everton fans were as happy as they've been for some time. Carlo Ancelotti had seemed to stop the Goodison Park ship from sinking, achieving a top-half finish and earning the club's highest points total since 1617. However, the Italian had his head turned by former flame Real Madrid, leaving the Toffees in a sticky situation. So who else to turn to than former Liverpool boss Rafael Benitez, who had just spent two years in China and last stint in the Premier League was a constant firefighting mission with Newcastle. United. The Spaniard may have won four of his first five games in charge on his Merseyside return, but soon it turned sour. The tactically inconsistent Benitez oversaw the departure of director of football Marcel Brands and would fall out with the players, culminating in the departure of Luca Dean to Aston Villa. Then, after just two league wins in three months, Benitez was eventually shown the door, with Everton firmly locked in a battle to avoid relegation. It's just a shame we can't do another section on his successor, Frank Lampard. So that was it. That's 10 mistakes we reckon have defined your club's season. Which ones do you think are the biggest blunders? Which one do you think we're being a little harsh on? Let us know in the comments down below. Make sure you're subscribed to Football Daily, hit the notification bell and give this video a like and we'll see you next time.